The way of action is mysterious, says the Bhagavad Gita, even to the wise. Indeed, the strange idea of freedom actually inheres in the space which is which is free of considerations. And what do I mean, mean by that? I mean, we might view thought as a series of considerations, as a series of ideas that we think about in order to decide what to do. And those thoughts might include thoughts about what we feel, what other people feel, what we want to do. I mean, I myself have talked many times about trying to discern what it is that we want to do. But it is also true that in some profound sense, our freedom consists precisely in being able to act apart from those considerations. Those considerations are like determining factors. But there is a kind of action which can occur not for any one of those factors alone and not for all of them together. That is to say, between the set of causes and considerations that might govern a particular decision and the decision itself, there is a gap. There is a gap in a certain kind of action that we take, a kind of action that we take in willful knowledge of the gap. That is to say, I am uncertain. I am uncertain, really. This is what it comes down to. The uncertainty of facts, the uncertainty of what we want, the uncertainty of life, the uncertainty of what we should do. We boldly take this in and act. And we can't fully justify our act. And in that sense, the act might be said to be, in a way, kind of arbitrary. But in fact, the act is not arbitrary. And the act is not random. But is rather a creative act. A creative act that we cannot explain with reference to thought. Now, there's a certain kind of act that we can do, or we can act in this way, quote unquote, deliberately. And then there is the deeper spiritual truth that in some sense, some profound sense, the deepest sense, all action is in fact of this type. That is to say, all action, we can retroactively try to explain in terms of various causes and considerations, but in reality, there is always a gap. An action arises spontaneously, as it were, of itself, out of the divine. That creative non-randomness that acts in defiance of, uncer in, uh, of uncertainty and in the knowledge that it cannot act randomly, randomness meaninglessness is not even a possibility. It's not even a possibility that when one acts, when one speaks, try as you might to be random. You cannot be random. Your actions, your words are perpetually governed by some creative force whose nature, that is to say, the laws and considerations of which are never fully graspable by the human mind. 
which is as much as to say as they are ungoverned, they are free in some sense, even though they're not random, even though they are intelligent. And the willingness to allow ourselves to act in this way, to allow ourselves to act in spite of or despite the lack of full considerations, in spite of uncertainty, is a gift given by the knowledge that one is not, in fact, acting at all, ultimately. That the action, and not just action, but thought itself of the individual is not yours. Is not yours in the way that you think you are. And, and thus, in fact, is yours. Is yours in a much deeper sense. So there's action that may be taken in this way, that is to say, action that one does, knowing that one does not know what to do or what one should do. And then there is the deeper truth that this is, in fact, the only kind of action that exists. And that deeper truth, if recognized in the context of the self, can, from the earlier perspective, facilitate action of this specific type.